In this video, we're going to cover heaps of different chart types. We're going to be doing bar charts, line charts, pie charts, area charts, heat maps, word clouds, scatter plots, maps, map regions, density plots, Gantt charts, hierarchies, and packed bubble charts. And we're going to get started right now. <laughs> All right, here we are in Tableau. I'm just using the Superstore data set. And this is this video is really just to kind of give you an idea of all the different uh, visualizations you can do and how easy they are to build. So let's begin very simply. Let's do a bar chart. So typically what I do is I always start with the measures and I simply double click. And we're going to do a few variations. So we can see that this is about $2.3 million. We can add segment. We can add another group. So you can do two layers. Let's add category as well but we don't have to just go one way we can go the other way let's bring category this way so you can go like that and if you want to reverse the direction instead of it being a column chart you want it to be this way simply move the measure this way like so very easy we can add a bit more variation like so and we can add the labels so i if i'm doing it quickly i just press this little label at the top or if I want to switch this directly into a heat map, very easy to do. I can just move the sales into the label. And straight away, we have it as a table like so. And I move. I also duplicate the sales by holding control. Drop it into color. That will make the text colorized, if that is a word. And we're going to switch this to square. There we go. Now, if you struggle with um, that for heat maps, there's another way you can do it which is if I just go segment, I'm just going to do some random ones. Let's say something, maybe not so much like, yeah, there we go. Something like that. And I've got profit here. The easiest way is just go show me and hit heat map right here. The problem with this particular method is that that heat map button sometimes can mess up your layout. So let's try it here. Hopefully you can do it. So you can see it restructures it. That's why it's a good idea to learn how to build it from scratch. All right, heading back to our bar chart. Let's just build a simple one. Let's do quantity this time. There we go. We got something like this. Another thing you can do is what's called a stacked bar chart, which basically means you're just splitting these up into like lower granularity. So maybe you want to split this up by region. Okay, so we grab region, for example, and we can just simply drop that into color. And there you have your regions. If you want to split them out, you just have to add region to the rows. So if you go region, add it here to the rows, and that will split them up. Really depends what you want to see. Let's go back. One other variation we can do here is sometimes you don't want to compare quantities. You want to compare the, uh, the percentage within that group. For example, you want to see, well, how much does the blue account for each time? So what you can do is you can go here to your um, measure and switch this to percent of total. That's step one. You'll notice nothing changes because it applies it to the entire uh, data set. So here we're going to go compute using and you just keep pressing different ones until you get the one you want. And I believe it would be sell. And let's add the label in. And what this does is for each cell, it calculates percent of total in just that group. So you can actually compare regardless of the quantities that typically the blue accounts for about 24, 23% where you have one month, uh, one time, uh, one data point that was significantly less. Maybe you want to analyze it. All right, let's get into line charts. Line charts, very easy. I tend to start with the dates for line charts, uh, if you're doing a date line chart, and I always right click the order date and drop it into columns. So time typically goes this way, and I always select continuous. The, the main reason I do this is I want to have a rough idea of the data points. So if I'm doing a data set that I'm rather familiar with, I know it spans a certain time period, let's say you know 2017 till 2020, then by doing this I know that my data is correct right that everything has come in sometimes you'll have a weird value in here that you're just like well no way we could have data here if the program only started last year why is there something from 1985 
then what we can do from here is add a, a vertical measure. So basically you're like spreading it out. Let's do this for profit. So I take profit and I bring it up here to rows. And that is your simple line chart. Let's change the granularity. Let's maybe make this month and let's split this up. So let's say I wanted to see the profit by month continuously and let's do it again for region. So I can add region into color and that will overlay them. Doesn't really tell me very much. So let's make this a running total, which is kind of standard practice. Quick, to uh, quick table running total makes it a little bit easier to understand. So if you have really granular data, that's one approach. The other approach is if you have something like this, you can do a moving average. So if I right click here on the profit, quick table, moving average what this does is it's consider a smoothing function and it smooths it out i won't get into the mathematics but let's go edit table calculation and by changing the period for your moving average you can smooth out the data obviously it depends on the type of data you are dealing with but you can see if i come out of this it's a little bit easier to kind of distinguish the patterns rather than this where it's just far too busy let us change this to running total again. And we're going to talk about area charts. <clears throat> For a line chart, everything just overlays. But with an area chart, it gives you an added uh, viewpoint, which is what is the sum of everything at that one data point? All right, so what is the sum of that? So if I go area, it will stack all those values on top of one another. And that's what gives you the area chart. So you can see here, this finishes up at 290,000 ish going backwards. This is only 110. And that is because they are stacked on top of one another. You can go a little bit further and actually split this out sideways. If you wanted to, let's say I get category, All right? I can go like that. And if I just want to restrict it to just a, to just uh, do the running total in that period, we can actually just go here, compute using and switch it to pain. And from there, it'll start at zero every single time. All right, let's get into scatter plots. So scatter plots, the way I go about it is two measures you always start with. Let's say I'm going to do profit and sales. It's very easy. I double click, prof, uh, double click profit and double click sales. And I end up with a single point. The reason for that is you are the first coordinate, sorry, which is let's say your X axis, this one is an aggregate because that's how Tableau works. So you can see here it's sum of sales and your vertical is again an aggregate, which is sum of profit. Profit. That's why you end up with one point. So you, to spread out that one point or to see it in more detail, you have to tell Tableau, well, what kind of breaking up procedure do I want? Typically for scatter plots, it's you have lots of little dots. That's kind of one of the benefits of it. So let's say I take product name. I can take that and drop it into detail. This now looks at the, the aggregated profit and sales per product name. All right, let's do one that's a little, not so crazy. Let's do city. You can see there, maybe we'll drop it to state. And you can control the granularity. You can do a few other things with scatter plots. So for example, we can add some colors. Let's say I wanted to add by category, you know, so that will split it up by category. Let's make this entire view by category. Maybe we also want to see the quantity so we can add an, another dimension using size. So you can see this one has a lot higher quantity. We can change that and you can even add another dimension by using shape right here. And if you can't see this, typically it's on automatic. You just go here to shape. All right, and you'll see that. And let's say I want to see all the ones where the ship status is all changed. So you can see these are all the ones which shipped early and that's not set on highlight. So let's set that there. So those are the ones that are early, shipped late and shipped on time. You can even split this up a little bit further if you really wanted to. Let's say I got region. I can bring region in here. I can bring, maybe not state, let's bring subcategory into rows. Oh, no, maybe too much. <laughs> let's go segment into rows. And you could do all sorts of things and split it up, split it up as much as you like. All right, next one is the word cloud. This one's really fun. And it's always a little bit tricky for beginners. <clears throat> With a word cloud, you are showing the words in a cloud 
and the size of the text determines some uh, is represent uh, represents some sort of value. So let's say I have um, all the states and I want to see who has the most sales. This is more like an artistic thing rather than an analytics thing. But what we do is we bring state into text. And what that will show is each of the states. All right. So the, each of the states. like So we don't want this country on top. That only happens because if you're grabbing from a hierarchy. All right. But we don't want that. So now we have uh, every single state here. We're going to add a sizing element. So we're going to go sales, drop it into size. It's going to change into a tree map. That's not what we want. So what you have to do is you have to go into marks and switch this to text. And there you go. And you can add some color. So you can see California had the highest sales, followed by New York, Texas, Pennsylvania. And you can do this with all sorts of things. You can even add a little bit more. Let's say if you wanted to do <laughs> by city, and I'm not going to do postcode because it's probably going to crash my computer or something. I don't know. I don't want to risk it. Uh, so that is your word cloud. The next one is some mapping. So mapping is always kind of one of my favorites. Let's go into state. So if you're doing something with like a region like this, you have a few options. You can represent them as dots, or if you click here on the marks and select map, you can make them these kinds of regions. There is some more advanced things, or like way more advanced things you can do with maps, but uh, let's just go through some of the basics. So here we can add some color, right? So that just colors up by state, but that usually doesn't tell me anything. It just tells me that they're all different. So we can bring in other colors like so. Did you know you can also split up your maps? So you can add category up there. Let's say I've got a segment. Where's segment? I can have it in here. You can have heaps of maps all representing different things. You can even do dual maps. So let's say I wanted to do two of them like this, right? So I just put latitude in there twice. On the second one, get rid of the color. Let's make this cities. Get rid of that, get rid of that. Okay, we have that there. Let's color this by, I don't know, profit or something, right? You can see like so. The points are quite small. There we go. That's fine for now, just for the illustration. And then from here with the latitude, you can dual access this. So one overlays the other, right? So you can do dual access with maps as well. Okay, density plot is again another one of my favorites. Let's go, let's try postcode. I haven't really used this. So sometimes you want to see where the concentrations are. The problem with the this particular visualization is sometimes when the data points are really close, especially like postcodes or even, you know, more granular data, when they when enough points overlap, you can't actually see the sum value because they're not actually on top of each other. They're just really close. So what you can do is once you get to this point, you can go into marks and switch this to density. All right. And then we can increase the size like so. And we can also change the color. Uh, this standard one, I mean, it's pretty hard to see. Let's change it to this one. So here you can you can now see a lot more uh, concentrations. If you want to see it a little bit better, I tend to go map uh, layers. And you can switch this to dark. And you can see it really pops out. So that's one of the cool things with maps. All right, three more to go. Let's do a Gantt chart. Okay, there are typically, you know, three or four things that you need for a Gantt chart. You need some sort of value going down that you're measuring. Sometimes it's projects, you know, tasks in a project. You need the start date of the activity and then the end date of, of the activity. From there, you can calculate the duration of the activity. And that's what Tableau uses. So let's start with the product ID, like so. And what we want to know is the difference between the actual and the scheduled um, days to ship. So we can uh, create the starting point, which is the days to ship schedule. And we're gonna add that to columns. <clears throat> it's gonna come up as a sum and that's okay. What we need to do is switch this to a Gantt. And what that does is instead of showing it as a bar, it only shows the sum value. There you go. And one, also, one little tip as well with Gantt charts, 
make sure whatever you're visualizing is the lowest level of granularity. For example, if there are 10 of these product IDs, it will sum up the date of each of those um, IDs. So just be very careful. Then what we need to do is add the duration of the activity. So the way you do that in Tableau is we create a calculated field. We're going to call this duration. And we're just going to do days to ship scheduled minus days to ship actual. There we go. And one of the cool things about this is you can, you can use measures like just a regular number, but you can also do this with dates, exact same process. And then what we do is we take duration and drop it into size. There we go. And that makes it a GAN chart. And when it comes to a project, typically these kind of go like that. Next one is a hierarchy. I'm going to show you how I do it, which is kind of like a cheat method, which is I start with two things, the um, dimension and one measure. That's it. So if I have a product name, let's say I've got all these, and I have sales. Also, tree maps or hierarchy maps the value you represent has to be positive because the result or the visualization says or well shows the space as the number right but if your value is negative you cannot show negative space that doesn't make any sense so from here once i got these two i'll do uh, i'll click on show me and do that and that will set up kind of the first stage then what do i what i do is if i want to add kind of some separators because sometimes when it's like this it's I mean it's just too much it doesn't really show me anything so let's say I want to split this by region I can grab region and drop it into color and you can see that starts to split it up let's say I also want to see it by state but I want to keep the region coloring instead of dropping it on color I can drop it on detail there we go and that will split it up again so obviously you can do a lot of kind of uh, tricks with this and moving them about. Uh, there's a lot that you can play with, so I'm not gonna go into all of them. One last thing I will show is if I take, let's say category and put it into columns, right? That can also split it up. So there's a lot of things you can do. All right, very last one, which is a packed bubble. Again, one of my favorites. I typically start with a dimension and a measure and then use the show me function, which is the easiest. Let's go into a dimension. So let's say I'm going to do state. So I've got states here. Now, if you're using a map uh, field and you're going to do something that's not a map, what you can do is instead of double clicking, which puts it into you know map mode, take the state and just drop it here into the field or drop it here into rows, and that will bypass the mapping. Then we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to get, uh, let's say, quantity. We got the quantities there and let's go show me and packed bubble and that ensures that I always get the base from here again I can add colors so let's say I want to add segment All right so you can see it splits it up further you know entire view spread it out and that is basically your packed bubble one other one that I forgot to show is a pie chart again I do it the simplest way but pie charts a bit fidgety in Tableau in my opinion. I start with some sort of value, let's say quantity, and I'm gonna add the dimension, let's say something simple like category. Typically, you don't wanna to add too many dimensions. You don't want something with too many dimensions on a pie chart where it cuts it up too much because then it kind of becomes counterproductive, uh, not counter, counter useful, I guess. Okay, from here, I'll go show me and click pie. The problem here is it doesn't really give you very much. So the next steps I do is I'll switch this to entire view. And the reason for that is once I start adding labels, it has space to go somewhere, right? When it's in that small view, it sometimes doesn't appear because you've got limited space. And you also have this setting down here, which stops text from that are gonna overlap from even appearing at all. And it makes it look like it's not working. So you don't want that. Then what I do is I take category, I hold control and I duplicate it into label. That gives me that one. I duplicate the sum of quantity into the label as well. So I've got a value. And usually with pie charts, we're representing percentages. So I'll take this one, quick table, percent of total. That gives me that. And then one more time, I take sum of quantity and drop it into label. Bang. There we go. I'll go into here. 
and then modify this. I make the category usually a little bit uh, larger. Uh, then I will take this value, put it there, and I'll put the percentage in brackets and make it red. And basically what you're doing is using size and coloring, you're trying to make it that each one looks a little bit different so that the human eye can read it uh, much more effectively. And there you go, a 20 minute crash course on heaps of different Tableau visualizations. If you want to learn more of a particular one or you want to see even more variations on a particular one, drop a comment in the comment section below and I will create more videos for you guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to learn the entire Tableau platform, consider enrolling into my course. It's one of the highest ranking courses on Udemy and enrolling today, you'll be joining the almost 200,000 students that have enjoyed my courses over the years. Thanks again for watching and hope to see you in the course.